What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Parrot Press. Today's video we're talking about the World Cup and the Global Cup. We're looking at the team that I'm going to be going for uh, in the World Cup, why I've chosen these, a couple of strategies that I'm kind of going in between, but this is the first draft of the team. Now I don't think that I'm going to be changing this too much, um, but uh, one one position really relies on some information that's that's hopefully going to come out before the deadline hits um, and before you have to submit your time, uh, your team. But let's get into it anyway, straight away. So from a forward point of view, um, I think there's only a few options that you can really go with. And for me, uh, I'm going to go with, in my opinion, the greatest player of all time, um, and that is uh, Lionel Messi. Now, you might already see here that I've just chucked in some placeholders uh, for, for points because I'm, I'm sure everybody don't want to be talking about Inkudu or uh, Dane St. Clair or something like that. Um, so we're just going to be focusing on the five that I'm going to be putting forward for the, for the, for the Global Cup. Uh, it's weird calling it a Global Cup, but uh, the World Cup, let's just call it that. Um, so, Messi, let's take a look at him. I don't need to justify this decision, I don't think. Uh, there was a few things that I was looking at for all of my players. I was looking at a good a good group for them, so they've never really got a, a really tough game. Um, I was looking at how they impact the play from set pieces. Now, in previous World Cups, there's been a ton of penalties, there's been a ton of um, controversial decisions from made by the referees uh, that really impact the game. So I want somebody who's there in and around uh, set pieces, either taking them or a massive threat um, when 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 the when the team does have a, a, a set piece. And Messi, he takes their corners, he takes their free kicks, he takes their penalties. He's obviously an outstanding player. He's their talisman. He's the person that their play is going to go through. He's going to play 90 minutes. I think even if Argentina wrap up the group, I think he still gets probably 70 minutes in this Poland game because Poland, I see them getting maybe a point out of Mexico and beating Saudi Arabia as well. So I don't think this this uh, group is going to be up for, um, sorry, I think the group might be up for grabs in terms of uh, the actual uh, winner. Now, look at this. This is just for Argentina, by the way. I've selected all from Data. 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. How can you not have this guy in your side, in, in my opinion, now the people that we've got to compete against is obviously Neymar and Mbappe, and you. I think in order to win, if you're trying to win this overall or your or your private leagues, I think that you need Neymar, Messi, or Mbappe, maybe even two, something like that in in your side. Um, Neymar's so capable of of, of hundreds, and so, and so is Mbappe, and they all play for teams or countries that um, are predicted to go a long, long way into the competition. Now, if you're going with your star striker, somebody like a, a Dusan Tadic, just because he plays well um, or he scores well for Ajax, then you're not going to win, in my opinion. If you're going for a Thomas Muller, I don't think you're going to win. He he will get goals. Don't get me wrong. Germany will turn up as they do for big competitions. Um, but uh, he's not going to turn out hundreds like Messi could or, or Neymar could. And the same as, as Lewandowski as well. So they're obviously outstanding players in their own right. But I think to win this competition, you do need... Um, a, an absolute monster and and for me Messi Messi is that now what I'm going to do is instead of uh going to a midfielder or a defender or whatever I'm going to go to that extra spot and that extra spot for me is going to be another forward that forward is going to be Antoine Griezmann for me all right so let's just jump back to that page um Antoine Griezmann when he plays for France Let's 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 take a look at his uh, so rare data. Actually, let's just take a look. So this is this is for France. This is all uh, so anything that so rare so, so rare data's got a 93, 80, 86, 84, hundreds in there, ninety ones in there. Um, all right, you've got some bad scores down here, and you might be thinking, why have Anton Griezmann when you should be having Mbappe uh, if you're going from anybody anyone on that front line for France because Benzema might not be playing in the first game at least. Now, the reason is, is because, again, from a set-piece point of view, 
historically he's taken penalties he takes free kicks he takes corners he plays as a center attacking midfielder who constantly turns up i think he's won the golden boot in previous uh world cups um but he constantly turns up and france are looking to go the full way as well from a group point of view they should be smashing australia and they should be smashing tunisia uh denmark will be a tough game I know that, um, but because he's involved with set pieces, can Denmark concede? Yes, they can. Can Griezmann get a decisive in that game because he's always in a, involved with the play? We're not just looking for um, a goal out of him. We have various areas and various circumstances where he can get a decisive just because he takes all of those set pieces as well. So coming back into here, the, the other thing that you can do is obviously go top heavy. You could have had a Neymar in there. But what that does is obviously take away points from your other positions. And I think that Griezmann does the job for me. The other reason why I've went for two forwards and a forward in that extra slot when um, obviously I come to pick in my five is because if um, if I if I do really well uh, in, the, in match day one, um, the likelihood of me getting a top forward somebody like um maybe Griezmann is the bottom of that pile right but but a Griezmann and above so a Harry Kane uh, I wouldn't be excited about a Vinicius Jr a Neymar and Mbappe and Benzema the likelihood of me getting somebody that I'm um then going to play over the other players that I've got in the in the in the side is is slim um now the, what I it, people who've played so rare before right You've played the Common League. How many times have you finished in the top 500 of the Common common League? Never. I mean, I certainly have, and I try and play it every week. I get nowhere near. So to get those star players, and I don't know what the prize pools are. I don't know, you know where, they, where they are. Maybe they'll release that soon um, in, in for you to, to qualify. But they're not just going to give Lionel Messi's out or Neymar's out for fun, are they? So... Um, a forward's not going to come in and take the place for me over Lionel Messi or Griezmann. The only two players that I'm going to get as a reward if I do really well that's going to take one of their positions and Messi stays in there the whole time. But who's going to take Griezmann's position is either Neymar or, or Mbappe, maybe Benzema. Nobody else. Um, so, so that's why I've gone for two forwards up top. Now moving on, let's talk about midfielders. So obviously I've... Um, I wouldn't say wasted, but I've used a lot of my points already with my forwards. So, so where does that leave me with midfielders? Now, again, I'm looking for um, players who uh, are detrimental to their team, going to more than likely play 90 minutes, involved with set pieces, um, and, and potentially could go a long way in the competition. For me, there's a few options here. You've obviously got Kimmich but then he's not involved with set pieces. Germany could be a bit hit and miss. They're not as strong as what they used to be, right? For 19 points, that's a lot to, to be spending. Kevin De Bruyne is obviously an animal. You know, Belgium, yes, they could go to the semis quite easily. They've got the quality around, uh, around the pitch and he's involved with set pieces and he's just an assist king. Um, you've got Foden for England. I don't see England doing fantastic in this competition. Again, set pieces are not there. Bruno's an interesting one. Uh, Portugal have got an okay group. He, you know, uh, he's he's a good player um, involved with set pieces as well. Um, but the the only other one that I was considering as a, as we just go through this list was Christian Eriksen. Now, I would love to get him in if I had some extra points, um, but because again, set pieces, Denmark are a really solid outfit. They're they're really good defensively. They're really good going forward. Um, and Ericsson is going to be a key part of that. But the person that I've gone for is is Luka Modric. Now, at 37 years of age, and I'll jump back to the midfielders page again. At 37 years of age, yes, he's obviously getting on a little bit, but he can he can run for fun. He's got stamina. He's got engines, uh, a, a great engine. And Croatia, again, are a good side who turn up in big tournaments. Now, if we take a look at Modric in terms of how he does for Croatia specifically, again, he's capable of 100. He's capable of the, the high 80s or at least mid 80s um, and capable of doing things. And if we look at that group, Morocco, they should be beating. Canada, they should be beating. Belgium's obviously going to be a tough game. But again, looking from, because he's involved with all those set pieces, we're not just looking from open play for Modric to get involved and score a goal or get that decisive. He can get it from elsewhere on the pitch. And that's what I like. I like that 
that utility and and that option that they can get involved in the game. Even if he's having an absolute stinker, one delivery from a corner um, and obviously a centre half or whoever heading uh, heading in, he gets a decisive, and that's what I want. Um, I want those sort of players in my side. So. Um, Modric, is, Modric is in there. He's obviously a very, very good player. Um, I don't need to justify that. But if we come back and look at this side, already we've got Messi, Griezmann and Modric. Uh, it's a good start. It's a very, very good start. Um, moving on to defenders. And now this is where I think I've got a little bit of a differential. And not in terms of... He's not a differential in terms of his name because everybody knows who he is. Um, he's one of the best defenders in the world. But Virgil van Dijk. I'm going to put him straight in, and then it's probably going to kick me to goalkeeper, so let's just jump back to defenders. Now, I don't see many people from um, the drafts that I've seen going around on Twitter, I don't see many people having this guy, um, and the reason is because he's so expensive. Now, if you have an expensive goalkeeper, and I'll come on to the goalkeeper decision in a minute, then maybe that's the, the, the weakest part or the riskiest part of my side, but... But if you have somebody like a Lloris who's, what is he, 15 points, all of a sudden um, you don't want a 17-point defender because you can't go top heavy. You, you, you potentially can't get a Messi in or you might have to sacrifice a midfielder by a couple of points, those, those sort of things. And I really like the players that I've already got in there. Now, Van Dijk, if we just take a look at him on Sorry Data, and this is looking at his... Um, uh, scores when he plays for for Netherlands. Again, you've got another 100 in there. He's 100 capable. I don't want a player who's never scored 100 before when he's playing for his country or even his club team. You know, if they're peaked at 70, why do I want them in? You need the best players that you possibly can that are capable of hitting hundreds if you want to try and win this thing or get high up in the leaderboard to get some decent um, rewards for the for the next next match days. He's just come off a 92. Uh, from his previous game, and that was against uh, Belgium, which is obviously a very tough game, but he popped up with that goal. And any time that Van Dijk goes up from a set piece, he does, I know that you probably could have a fullback who takes set pieces, but when this guy goes up for corners, and they might get seven or eight a game, he is an animal in the air, and he's going to be their target. Um, a target is in... Uh, trying to whip the ball on his head to, to obviously um, score, not in terms of actual target of... Anyway, whatever. Um He's six foot four, six foot five, whatever he is, and um, yeah, it's just an animal. Just look at him. Just look at him in his in his, in his uh, Dutch kit there. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. But anyway, let's go back. Um, other defenders that are considered: uh, Cancelo for Portugal, two points less, I think he is. If I scroll down here, yeah, you'll see him there. Um, really good for City, not as good as for Portugal. Um, I have doubts over Portugal especially what's just happened with Ronaldo coming out. Maybe there's going to be some dressing room uh, issues there. I really like Trippier as a player. And as everybody knows that he's been outstanding for Newcastle, just getting 90s and 100s for fun. But he might not even be playing for England. If they decide a back four, he might go for Trent or he might go for Walker. If they play the back three, he might put Trent as the right wing back and Walker on the inside. So he might not even play. He might play on the left-hand side, but then you've got a natural left-footed uh, left Luke Shaw who's been playing well of recent times as well, so I think he's out. Marquinhos, yeah, decent. Thiago Silva, decent. Uh, I don't know who the starting uh, centre-backs are, but I assume it's those guys. And Brazil have got an all-right group. It's a bit tougher than people probably think. Um, but, and it, but oh, the other one, the other one that I really considered was, where is he? Uh... Is he really this slow? Yes. Pavard. Every time that I've seen a major tournament, this guy plays right back normally and smashes it. He scores at least like a, a couple. He's involved. He gets forward a lot. And obviously he's playing for, for one of the strongest sides um, in, in the tournament. So if I had the points, yes, I would get um, Pavard in. Anybody else that I could uh, consider? No, because I don't know who the centre-backs are going to be for France. Um, Croatia, this guy, yeah, he's decent, pretty decent, but are Croatia going to go the full distance or likely to? No, I, I would bank on the Netherlands being a bit further than Cro Croatia, even though I've got Modric in, Modric in there. Um, but, but yeah, so I've gone for Van Dijk. I think I don't need to justify why I've picked him. 
um, I think is a, is a really good option that m not many people are going to have. Now, moving on to the goalkeeper. So, as you can see there, I've got eight points left. Who am I going to go with? Who can I get in who's a starting goalkeeper for eight points? And it is... the uh, Where is it? One of these. Take your pick, basically, because no one's certain who the excuse me, number one's going to be. No one knows. But I think it's going to be this guy, um, Bijlo. Now, uh, Pazvir, as you can see there, is 39, right? And Norpa is, is 28. So uh, with everything that's happened with Sillison in recent weeks where he didn't make the squad, I think that um, he would have been uh, really pushing Bijlo for that number one. Now, Pazvir did play in the last international but let's take a look at Beasley. You, you'll be able to see here. Um, first off, let's talk about his group. Now, as with Van Dyke, they've got a really solid group in terms of solid for them, uh, in terms of getting free clean sheets. Can they not concede against Senegal, Ecuador and Qatar? Absolutely. Absolutely. You've got one of the best defenders in the world. You've got people like De Ligt and um, De Jong that are around him as well, that are really strong and um, have good footballing IQs and, and, and you know play for top, top teams. So they can get clean sheets there. But if we look here, in the last, uh, what's that, maybe seven or eight games, He's only missed one, so I'd be surprised if he's not the number one. And maybe that was just a little bit of rotation here, game week 218, 219. Maybe there was just some rotation. But um, but yeah, I think that Bijlo is going to be the number one. Um, and this is the one that I was talking about at the beginning of the video where I'm going to be keeping a real eye out to see whether we can get any information because they're in group, I think it's in group, B, no, Group A with Qatar there. Maybe there's going to be some news before the deadline, which I can get to who's going to be the number one. Um, but he, capable, uh, you know, I don't, I don't care that there's not 100 in there or an 80 or whatever. He's capable of a clean sheet. And to be honest, all I ask for a goalkeeper is to get a clean sheet. If you don't get a clean sheet, put it this way, there's three group games, all right? I personally think if you don't get two clean sheets out of those for your goalkeeper, you are massively struggling to win it. This is not to win your mini leagues or whatever like that, because it depends, but to win the whole thing, um, which I'm assuming everyone is putting teams out there to win the whole thing, right? So, so yeah, um, I think if you don't do that, you're struggling. So getting in a goalkeeper that's, yeah, maybe eight or nine points, but doesn't play for as, as a strong as team as Netherlands, you're struggling. Now, the other goalkeepers that I did actually consider, and let me just close this down there was there was from uh two nations right so you've got croatia and you've got uh who's the other one uh portugal um diego costa and livakovic they're the only other two that are that are uh, coming to mind because again i wanted to go heavier up top um any midfield and then defenders that actual my outfield players um diego costa there's I think he's number one. There's a question with Rui Patricio as well because he's got experience, but I think he is number one. Um, but uh, I don't know about Portugal. I don't know what Portugal is going to turn up. So there's questions there. And the difference of five points between the starting goalkeeper from Netherlands and the starting goalkeeper from Portugal doesn't matter to me. Uh, they've both got great centre-backs. Comes down to what pick it a draw. Every goalkeeper is capable of a clean sheet, but when you look at the groups, when you look at the people there in front of them, when you look at the points and the value that they're going to bring you, I think it's a bit of a no-brainer to go if you can if you can get that eight pointer for Netherlands. Um, I think it's a bit of a no-brainer. The other one is a bit of a closer call, I suppose, because he's ten points and there's only two points between uh, the Netherlands starting number one and Croatia number one. Um, but Croatia, number one, do I see them, as I said, going the full distance or as, or as far into the competition as possible? They're 100% capable, um, but for the sake of having that two points and using and getting in somebody like a Griezmann or a Modric over a, an Ericsson and another forward that you're not really going to play, then then again, I think it's a bit of a no-brainer. But they're the only other two uh, goalkeepers that I actually considered 
Um, I've not considered anybody else and they've not been in my teams. So if we, um, I've already done this, so let's just, uh, let's just go back here because uh, I've already set the lineup. And now if we look at that team, okay, Lionel Messi is my captain. Uh, let's go into, what is it, the, uh, the arena, is it called? So let's just fly through these. Oh, there we go. Stacking from a defender and a goalkeeper point of view, something that I already do in um, in so rare anyway, from a rare, uh, from an all-star point of view, from when I'm putting challenger teams out, etc. Uh, I think that puts you in the best place. They've got a really, really good group. If I can get that number one, as I've said, I think that I'm capable of at least two clean sheets. Van Dijk is a threat from and you know every corner, and he's got great AAs because he doesn't lose. Uh, many jewels. You've got Modric in there, takes all of their set pieces, Talisman, Croatia, a decent side, get probably, well, I'd say 90% getting out of that group as well. Capable of going a long way, but I prefer having a midfielder than a defender from Croatia. And Griezmann, as we talked about, he's got a great first game uh, against Australia, uh, takes all of their sets. And then Messi, again, don't need to justify that. Great game, great player, takes all their sets. So from a team, I look at that and I think that's really, really strong. Now, the other people that I've got in there, the, this guy here, Dane Sinclair, um, the Canada number one got injured uh, in the last game, uh, the M MLS Cup. So I think he's their number one. So I've just got him in there just in case anything happens or um, Bijlo, uh does lose his spot and I don't find that information out. At least I've got a, a number one that's coming in. And then from a defender and a midfielder point of view, that could be anyone for me. Um, I don't know yet. I've not really confirmed who that who that might be. But that's my side. That's my first draft at the moment. Um, let me know down below if you've got any of these players, uh, if anything that I've said is complete rubbish. Um, if uh, let me know what your team is as, as well and uh, if anybody has any mini leagues out there drop the code into the comments I'd, I'd love to join I'm not setting up my own one I'm joining everybody else's um, but uh, yeah if you like the video hit that like button if you want to see some more hit that subscribe button good luck guys I might release one more video before the World Cup gets going if anything changes if it doesn't I'll probably leave it how it is um, but but that's my side that's the size that's going to win the Global Cup and I'll see you in the future.